Today we're going to film and build some stock maker screws. Similar to a tap handle, stock maker screws make it possible for a stock and, and uh, action to be uh, screwed together or, or fastened together without using the factory screws. The factory screws you don't want to mess up too much and you're going to dicker up the head. So, so what you do is you make a surrogate. And I like the way this tap handle is made to where it has a ball bearing on the inside to stop the handle. What I think I'll do is I'll put one right in the center as well. The thing that we got to run into though is as they're underneath the stock, you may have the handles hitting each other. We don't want that. So one's going to have to be longer than the other to avoid that. Another thing to note is the distance that we're going to need to clear. So if we look at another one of my Remington 700s, it looks like three inches ought to give us enough clearance for this grip area. We're going to start out at uh, oh, 2 and 5 eighths and then we'll do a uh, 3 eighths collar there. This part will be, let's say an inch and then this will be 3 quarters of an inch, quarter 28 because that's the thread in the bottom of the receiver. In here will be an interesting feature. We're going to have to drill a hole with a spring, a ball bearing, and then I'm going to have the hole right here near the top, 5 sixteenths. We'll drill a quarter inch hole, drop a spring down in there, and get a nice 3 sixteenths ball bearing. So this will be the rear. Front will go right here. Same concept, except a little shorter. We're going to call this space uh, eighth inch. This I think we can do one and three quarters. Remember, we don't want this bar to be hitting that so three eighths there this is shorter we'll do a 0.5 there and I want to make sure I have enough thread so we'll do three quarters there total length on that should be three and three eighths and total length on that should be four and five eighths yeah four and five eighths I guess my length on this one's uh, a pretty comfortable length. I'm going to go ahead and go with this dimension right there, which is five and five and an eighth. And then we'll reduce this like so, and then we'll put a divot right in the center there. And we're going to give it three one two is five sixteenths. We'll go uh, we'll go three ten right there for that diameter. I just realized we never determined our diameter for the body. We're going to go 5 eighths of an inch because we have a 5 sixteenths hole right here. I want to drill about a quarter inch hole down the center of that. Seven six five. That's how I'd like it to come off. I tilted the tool head back a little bit, about maybe twenty thirty degrees. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and drill that quarter inch hole. 
Um, I'm not at my finished diameter yet. I'm at 650 right now. So I have another 25 thou to go. So if I induce any wobble into this uh, round shaft, I can still mill that out as, uh, as I finish up. So let me go ahead and change trucks here. My pilot hole's already drilled. But what I'll do is I'll put in a quarter inch drill bit. So if my math is right, I'm going to go an inch and a half deep. That'll account for the 5 16 diameter T-handle hole, an eighth inch for the, above that for the material. And then if I put a one inch spray inside here and put a one inch ball bearing, then I can compress it down to three quarter inch and that'll give me enough up pressure. And I can trim that if I want to, to adjust the up pressure. All right, that's an inch and a half. I hate when I talk for three minutes and then realize the camera isn't on. So I'm at 634 according to my micrometer. My dial calipers say 631. I would trust my micrometer any day of the week. So we're gonna go in three thousandths and the monkey flips the switch. We need to take off just a hair to bring us to 6.625. Uh, I'll finish the, uh, finish the outside with some sandpaper and uh, bevel the edge and this end will be done. So getting back to what I was saying about the dial calipers, 0.626, and the micrometer is reading 630. Didn't figure that one out yet. All right, so what I need to do is mark off one and three quarter. And then I'll add three-eighths to that. One and three-quarters plus three-eighths. Flip this around. There's my stop point for my quarter inch. And then I will make a little collar plus a bevel. So that bevel is going to start at one and one and five-eighths. It's uh, five-eighths here. It's going to bevel down to three eighths right here, and then this will be all quarter inch. But I need to flip it around now. Need a little tap. When I make that bevel, I want it perfect because that is one feature of this tool that sets it apart from just a straight shaft. It's a transition from a big diameter to a little diameter. And of course the threads have to look good too to be functional, but I want that bevel perfect. That's why I'm trying to get so freaking silly on this thing because that's why. All right, so I got it within a thou and I'm happy with that. All right, so what I've done is I've drilled a, uh, a center for the uh, for the life center on the back side. I didn't make it too deep 
I got maybe a 64th to a 32nd of an inch of uh, chamfer on the inside. I don't want to go too deep because this is going to be bolt later on. This is going to be quarter 28 thread. We'll go in another 10. That should bring it to 420. Three seventy-eight. I'm gonna do a skim cut and that's it. So now I have to do that chamfer. That's my last cut right there. I just bumped up against that uh, that three eighths uh, diameter. Good enough for me. So even though I only have three eighths of an inch worth of three eighths diameter there, I'm still going to give it a nice little uh, polish. Seventy-five. Last pass should be two fifty. After that, the screw itself is like two forty-six. It's still two fifty-one, two fifty-two. This part right here is an eighty-two degree angle. That simulates the uh, countersink on the head of the screw. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm setting up to. I've changed the gears out already. I'm setting up to cut three quarters of an inch worth of threads, and I'm just finding my stopping point right here. So what I'm doing right now is letting it sit at the same depth and letting the springiness of the stainless push itself into the cutting bit. This is, uh, I don't have enough room here for a live center. So I'm just taking some really ridiculously light cuts about a thou at a time. It's a little tight. Not by much. We're almost there. There's literally a distance of three, two to three thousandths of an inch, keeping me from getting this thing on that receiver. So, 252. I need to be at about 249. And there it is.
I got a lot of excess thread there. I'm gonna go ahead. I know I don't need a lot of that, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a quarter inch off it. Change of plans. On this one, we're gonna shorten uh, or lengthen the threads on this one to 880, and we're gonna make this shank area 0 0.640. It'll uh, more accurately represent the actual dimensions of our screw. So this is the T-handle part. I'm gonna take it down from, uh, I believe it's 3 three eighths to uh, 5 sixteenths. So what I'll do, we're at 242 right now. I'll take five fell off at a time. So that's it for that end. Do that three more times and you'll have a couple of uh, nice straight shafts with a good polish. And it's, uh, it's ready to go. So I got uh, a measurement here which represents half the length of this uh, T-handle rod. I'm going to bring this guy closer to the chuck so it doesn't chatter. So that's one T-handle done. Now I gotta go ahead and make the other one and I'll drill the holes in the uh, bodies of the uh, stock maker screws. Fixing the drill this hole but I need to put these brass shims in here so I can get a decent reading off the jaws. Backed it off to 10. And now it's at 14, we'll go to 12. We're within a half thou, so not complaining. So what I did with the crank wheel, I came over an eighth inch from the edge. Then I started to find the center of my 5 sixteenths and just by holding up a bit right next to it, it looks pretty good. It chipped through great on the back side, so around the bottom part. I was wanting to make sure that my my uh, drill bits weren't twisting uh, due to the misalignment, possible misalignment with that hole in the middle. But uh, we're good to go. Let's run a reamer on that bad boy. That is absolutely perfect right there. We got a wee bit of a burr on the back side, but that's not a big deal. I can take that off on the lay of the file. Clean out the hole a little bit. No 
a little thick on that side, but I can take that down with a file easily. I got it to go on pretty, pretty smooth. A few little hiccups here and there, but I think with use and time, that'll uh, that'll wear in. I'm gonna give her a final polish right now with some crocus cloth. Alright, so there it is. Um, T-handle, all I need to do is get a spring in the ball bearing, and she should snap right in there. Alright, back to the drawing board. Uh, I put a hole in here for a spring and a ball bearing. However, the spring pack that you get from your local uh, homeless despot is uh, a little too big, so yeah, I gotta drill that out. This is 258, so what I'll have to do is uh, ream that out a little bit more, put the spring in there, and then what I want to do is take this leftover stock well, it's not left over, I just screwed up on it. And I want to make my own bearing. So it'll be a pilot with a uh, spot in it to fit inside the spring. And then I'll make this quarter inch. And then this will probably be you know, quarter inch as well. And then I haven't measured this, of course, yet. But I'll just uh, I'll spin that down to about uh, three-eighths. And then uh, turn it down until it, the spring fits on it. What that'll do is put some upward pressure and it'll hit this step right here so it'll stay centered. And then it'll also prevent it from falling off the end when it hits this slot. Hopefully. In my haste to uh, not want to wait till tomorrow to buy a quarter inch ball bearing, I decided to go ahead and do this. Yep, yeah, I'm going to switch this thing around. This is getting in my way. One of the disadvantages of having a cheap Chinese lathe is you have to bring this thing way out just to change the angle that and even though it has this nice protractor on the side there's no index mark to line it up now having to know the inner diameter of the spring is kind of important what I'm doing is just trying to figure out the magic size and it looks like we have 1164 which is 0.172 And that fits like a glove. I'm gonna go ahead and save my lathe bit and just use a hacksaw. Bring this down to an even 250, 254. I want a couple thou on each side. Just round it off the tip to make it look like a ball bearing and it's going to sit inside that hole. Alright, so what I did here is I, uh, I glued some sandpaper onto a, a piece of dowel. I'm just going to run it in there, let the sandpaper do its job, put a little oil on it, keep a good polish. I want it smooth so that spring doesn't have uh, any friction on the inside. flush like a glove and it's got just a little bit of resistance at the end so when I push down on the bearing and slide that handle in I should have just the right amount of up force to keep that thing uh, centered I need to go in another quarter inch so my depth is right around there so I'm going to take this over to the vise and clamp it up. In goes the spring and our pin and then our 
steel rod. Oh, tons better. I'm liking that. It locks nice and tight right there, and I can still move it either way. Slick. Very nice. And it's got a really positive stop there in the center too. It, uh, it doesn't want to fall out of that uh, divot. On to the next one. So here they are, uh, stock maker screws, uh, a set of two. Uh, these things are both stainless. I'm pretty sure it was 316 stainless, uh, non-magnetic. You can't beat homemade tools. You, you just can't. Uh, I could have bought these for $17 on Amazon. I think Wheeler Engineering makes them. But um, for the fit, finish, you can't beat handmade. Uh, I love these things. They're great. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, there's more to come. There's a lot more tools on this project that I need to make. Uh, got a hold of my uh, gunsmith down south. Uh, I'll be bringing him on board with the project here in a few weeks. But uh, everything's moving along pretty nicely. I probably won't have it done by December. But uh, I'm pretty sure Feb January, February I'll be, uh, I'll be pulling the trigger and hurting my shoulder. So I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.